Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. I get a lot of questions about med school admissions and that's probably because I haven't really made a comprehensive video on the topic yet. I'll definitely be making very specific videos in the future on med school admissions, but I first wanted to get this out of the way because it'll help me from responding to dozens of emails and it'll help you from seeking out this information from various sources. This is going to be a comprehensive video covering all the things that med school admissions are looking for and ranking them based on importance, at least for a traditional student. Obviously be yourself and own who you are, but don't forget that these are things that medical schools are looking for. And if you neglect a lot of them, your chances are pretty slim. And there's actually a table out there that really succinctly summarizes a lot of this information and it's a 2015 survey by the AAMC. So let's have a look at that. This table is a really simple way of explaining what medical schools want from applicants. So they divide it into highest importance, medium importance, and lowest importance for academic experiences, demographics, and other data. So let's just start going over the table. So as you can see for academic metrics, GPA, MCAT score are really important, but not just the GPA itself. You also have to factor in grade trends if your grades are going up or down over time. And they separately look at your science GPA and your cumulative GPA. And one thing that you should note here is that the MCAT total score trend is seen as very important. And what that means is if you take the MCAT once and you score okay, but you take it a second time and score higher, that's seen very positively. While if you score decently the first time and you score even worse the second time, that's seen very negatively. So that's just something to take into account when determining to retake your MCAT or not. It really should be a score increase. And this is kind of a no brainer, but your completion of pre-medical course requirements. So from this table, we can see that GPA and MCAT are really important in getting into medical school. But I don't think that this table itself tells the full story. So let's look at a 2011 paper by the AAMC to further clarify what I'm trying to get at. So this 2011 paper is interesting because it divides what med school admissions are looking for based on how they choose to invite you to an interview and how they choose to give you an acceptance. So if we look at what matters most to inviting interviewees, GPA and MCAT are actually the most important, but when we switch that over and look at how they choose to accept students after the interview, GPA and MCAT actually drop a little bit while the things under like personal statements and community service, they raise and rank. And we can also see that based on the rating scale, one is seen as not important, two somewhat, three is seen as important, four very important, five extremely important. Everything is actually pretty similar, like around the three range. Now, as for experiences that are seen as highly important, those include community service and volunteer work, both medically and non-medically related. Now, the thing about physician shadowing is I think most students actually do shadow, so it's not gonna be a differentiator. You're always looking to have something that differentiates you from everyone else. So if this is just a check mark that everybody has, it's not going to be the thing that gets you into medical school. Leadership is definitely highly valued in getting to med school and college for that matter. Leadership is really important for admissions in general. And there are actually demographic factors that are also seen as important when getting into med school. So US citizenship is important, state residency, and if you're from a rural slash urban underserved background, and like we've seen in the other paper, interview results are seen as very important. I wish I could give some more specific pointers on what interview results mean here, but I'm guessing it does include both biased and unbiased factors, like the way you're dressed, the way you're talking, as well as your ideas and what you're bringing to the table in terms of experiences and stuff you're sharing with the interviewers. So that's just my personal take on what you see here. And obviously this is 2015, I think things are also changing. And so now let's consider the factors that are seen as medium importance. So let's start with completion of challenging upper level science courses. So this, I don't know how important it is, 
and how feasible it is for med schools to determine this. Because just judging from the diverse backgrounds of medical students admitted, people are coming from all sorts of backgrounds. So you'd kind of expect a music major to have less science courses than a biology major, for instance. And I don't think med schools are looking at that too harshly. I don't know how feasible it is for medical schools to judge how difficult your classes are, because I highly doubt they're going on rate my professor and seeing you took a class that's seen as insanely hard. And if they're just looking at the name of the course, I don't know if that is enough to tell you about the difficulty of it. If it's whatever, molecular biology 107, principles of whatever, it's kind of difficult to judge exactly what that class is and how difficult it is. So as for experiences that are seen of medium importance, those include paid employment, research or lab experience, other extracurricular activities, and military service. Now, I think these are more important than most people give them credit for because these are the differentiators. Almost, ev not everyone, but many, many people do shadowing, community service, and all that. But not everyone is doing these things of medium importance that are marked here. So if you have these, they're a big plus on your application. And I think you should be cautious about these other extracurricular activities because they could help your application, but I think they can also hurt your application because these activities kind of paint the picture of who you are. And if you paint the wrong picture, or you paint a picture that the admissions don't like, then that scene is pretty negative. And as for demographics, race and ethnicity and socioeconomic status are of medium importance when getting accepted into medical school. So now let's look at the things that are seen as low importance. So those include degree from graduate or professional program, completion of challenging non-science courses, selectivity of undergraduate institution. Now this is really interesting and I get a lot of questions about this. So here it's seen as low importance. And I think by itself, maybe that's true, but I think there are a lot of factors associated with your undergrad institution that give you that boost. So whatever the case may be, whether it's unconscious bias from admissions officers, or top schools just have that much better candidates, or maybe something like you get better letters of rec from better colleges, whatever the case may be, I do see the trend where top med schools are accepting more people from top undergrad institutions. And undergraduate major is seen as lowest importance. I think that that's the case. There are people from all sorts of backgrounds that are accepted into med school. So I don't think it's as big a deal to be a science major as some people would think. Experiences that are seen of low importance, those include teaching, tutoring, paid employment that's not medically related, athletics, honors, awards, recognition, conferences attended, presentations, posters, and publications. Now this last item is pretty interesting. So I think in recent years, the amount of people getting involved in research and deeply getting involved in research is increasing and pretty rapidly. So I think that this last part is becoming more and more important. Personally, I do see a trend where top schools are more likely to accept people with publications versus those without them. And lastly, let's look at demographic factors that are seen as lowest importance. First generation immigrant status, fluency in multiple languages, gender, English language learners, state residency, legacy status, community college attendance, and age. So while age in itself is not an important factor in med school admissions, the extra time does give you time to do more extracurriculars and activities, which will help your application. And again, just from my experience, I have seen that there are a good amount of people accepted into medical school that have taken a gap year or two to accumulate more activities and get more experiences under their belt. And I'm not sure why it wasn't in the 2015 survey table, maybe it wasn't asked about or something, but letters of recommendation, as you can see, are very important in getting accepted to medical school. So make sure there's a lot of juice in those letters of rec. Obviously you can't look inside them, just make sure you really are connecting with the people you're getting letters from. I don't think they asked about this in the survey, but it looks like experience with underserved populations has a 3.0 on the rating scale, which is seen as important. So experience with underserved populations is definitely a bonus. Uh, I guess they didn't ask about this either. Personal statements. Personal statements are seen anywhere between important to very important in getting into medical school. 
So just keep in mind that personal statements, experience with underserved populations, and letters of rec, even though they weren't in that table, um, they're still pretty important for getting into medical school. I think that's all of the things I wanted to touch upon myself and give some insight into. I think everything else in the table is pretty self-explanatory. You can pause the video and look at it yourself. Um, I hope this video really helped with all the questions that I've been getting. Sometimes people who need help the most actually aren't the ones that are actively seeking out information. So I do urge you to share this video with any pre-med you know who might need some help or even if they're not showing that they're struggling that you think might benefit from a little bit of guidance because I do know the admissions process is pretty murky. I'll be making more specific videos about med school admissions in the future, but for now, hope this helped. Share it with anyone who you think it might help. I think it'll be very helpful to a lot of people because it is a pretty comprehensive source of what you need to do traditionally to get into med school other than being yourself and owning whatever unique aspects about you are beneficial to your application. But that's for another video. Thank you for watching this one. See you next week.